75 years ago, the US had dropped the first of its two atomic bombs on Japanese cities. The first in Hiroshima killed more than 70,000 people instantly. A second bomb, which was dropped three days later over Nagasaki, killed 40,000 more. Nuclear warfare was introduced in World War II and a devastating chapter in world history. What happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? On the morning of August 6th at 8.15 a.m. local time, a B-29 bomber, Enola Gay, dropped the atomic bomb called Little Boy with a force of over 20,000 tons of TNT on the city of Hiroshima. This was when most industrial workers had already reported to work. Many others were en route and children were in schools. The U.S. Strategic Bombing Survey of 1946 notes that the bomb which had exploded slightly northwest of the center of the city killed over 80,000 people and injured just as many. Three days later, another atomic bomb called Fat Man was dropped over Nagasaki around 11 a.m. local time, killing more than 40,000 people. The 1946 survey notes that due to the uneven terrain of Nagasaki, damage there was confined to the valley over which the bomb exploded, and therefore, the area of nearly complete devastation was much smaller at about 1.8 square miles. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll look at why the USA bombed Japan the way it did during World War II. But before that, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more similar content. Let's dive in. World War II was fought by millions of people in all corners of the world. There were battles and military posts in surprising places. The Caribbean and Central America, Greenland, Alaska, and the Aleutian Islands, Iraq, Syria, Burma, and the Arctic are few of the little-known places that were involved. Every major country of the time was involved in the war. Conflict in the Pacific began well before the official start of World War II. Seeking raw materials to fuel its growing industries, Japan invaded the Chinese province of Manchuria in 1931. By 1937, Japan controlled large sections of China and accusations of war crimes against the Chinese people became commonplace. At this time, several treaties were in place to limit the size of natives in the Pacific Ocean. In 1934, Japan ended its cooperation with other major powers in the Pacific by withdrawing from the Five Power Treaty. The United States, along with other countries, criticized Japanese aggression but shied away from any economic or military punishments. Relations between the United States and Japan worsened when Japanese forces took aim at Indochina with the goal of capturing oil-rich areas of the East Indies. Responding to this threat, the United States placed an embargo on scrap metal oil and aviation fuel heading to Japan and froze Japanese assets in the United States. Furthermore, the United States demanded that the Japanese withdraw from conquered areas of China and Indochina. Japan, sensing conflict was inevitable, began planning for an attack on Pearl Harbor by April 1941. The Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941 brought the United States officially into World War II. In the surprise attack, Japan sunk several ships, destroyed hundreds of planes, and ended thousands of lives. The Japanese goal was to cripple the U.S. Pacific Fleet, and they nearly succeeded. President Franklin Roosevelt called the attack a day which will live in infamy, and the American people were shocked and angered. Japan was a fierce enemy of the U.S. and its allies, Britain, China, and the Soviet Union, during the Second World War. After the conclusion of the Second World War in 1945, the relations between Japan and the U.S. worsened, especially as Japanese forces decided to take a name at Indochina with the intention of capturing the oil-rich areas of the East Indies. The Japanese had publicly stated their intent to fight to the bitter end and were using tactics such as kamikaze attacks in which pilots would suicide dive against U.S. warships. Therefore, the then U.S. President Harry Truman authorized the use of atomic bombs in order to make Japan surrender, which it did. The Manhattan Project Even before the outbreak of war in 1939, a group of American scientists, many of them refugees from fascist regimes in Europe, 
became concerned with nuclear weapons research being conducted in Nazi Germany. In 1940, the U.S. government began funding its own atomic weapons development program, which came under the joint responsibility of the Office of Scientific Research and Development and the War Department after the U.S. entry into the World War II. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was tasked with spearheading the construction of the vast facilities necessary for the top-secret program codenamed the Manhattan Project for the Engineers Corps' Manhattan District. Over the next several years, the program scientists worked on producing the key materials for nuclear fission, uranium-235 and plutonium or PU-239. They sent them to Los Alamos, New Mexico, where a team led by J. Robert Oppenheimer worked to turn these materials into a workable atomic bomb. Early on the morning of July 16, 1945, the Manhattan Project held its first successful test of an atomic device, a plutonium bomb at the Trinity test site in Alamogordo, New Mexico. No surrender for the Japanese. By the time of the Trinity test, the Allied powers had already defeated Germany and Europe. Japan, however, vowed to fight to the bitter end in the Pacific, despite clear indications as early as 1944 that they had little chance of winning. In fact, between mid-April 1945, when President Harry Truman took office, and mid-July, Japanese forces infiltrated Allied casualties, totaling nearly half of those suffered in three years of war in the Pacific, proving that Japan had become even more deadly when faced with defeat. In late July, Japan's militarist government rejected the Allied demand for surrender put forth in the post Dam's declaration, which threatened the Japanese with prompt and utter destruction if they refused. General Douglas MacArthur and other top military commanders favored continuing the conventional bombing of Japan already in effect and following up with a massive invasion codenamed Operation Downfall. They advised Truman that such an invasion would result in U.S. casualties of up to 1 million. In order to avoid such a high casualty rate, Truman decided over the moral reservations of Secretary of War Henry Stimson, General Dwight Eisenhower, and a number of the Manhattan Project scientists to use the atomic bomb in the hopes of bringing the war to a quick end. Proponents of the A-bomb, such as James Byrnes, Truman's Secretary of State, believed that its devastating power would not only end the war, but also put the U.S. in a dominant position to determine the course of the post-war world. Why was Hiroshima chosen for the attack? Truman decided that only bombing a city would not make an adequate impression. The aim was to destroy Japan's ability to fight wars. Hiroshima, the primary military target, with a population of about 318,000 people, was also the seventh largest city in Japan at the time, and served as the headquarters of the Second Army and the Chukogu Regional Army. This made it the most important military command stations in the country. It was also the site of one of the largest military supply depots and the foremost military shipping point for troops and supplies. How many were killed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? The explosion killed 70,000 people instantly in Hiroshima and 40,000 in Nagasaki by December 1945. The death toll had risen to 140,000. Thousands more died from their injuries, radiation sickness, and cancer in the years that followed, bringing the toll closer to 200,000. According to the Department of Energy's History of the Manhattan Project, Impact of Nuclear Attack on Hiroshima and Nagasaki the impact of the bomb was so terrifying that practically all living things, human and animal alike, were literally seared to death by the tremendous heat and pressure set up by the blast. Tokyo Radio said in the aftermath of the explosion, according to a report by The Guardian in August 1945, but the damage did not end there. The radiation released from the explosion would cause further suffering in the times to come. At noon on August 15, 1945, Japanese time, Emperor Hirohito announced his country's surrender in a radio broadcast. The news spread quickly and victory in Japan, or VJ Day, celebrations broke out across the United States and other allied nations. The formal surrender agreement was signed on September 2nd, aboard the U.S. battleship Missouri, anchored in Tokyo Bay.